study. I thought I'd read a book outside, especially since it's spring and the sun is warm and it's a lovely day. All right, here we go. The book is Please, Please, The Bees by Gerald Kelly. There's the title page. Benedict was a creature of habit. He liked to do the same thing every day. Every morning he woke up at the same time and every morning he stretched, he scratched, and he yawned a great yawn. <sighs> every morning the bees delivered three jars full of honey. Benedict ate the same breakfast he'd eaten since he was just a fuzzy cub. Toast with honey and tea with extra honey. Yum. Next came his daily routine, practicing, perfecting his honey cake recipe, knitting, and running errands. At night he'd read, and then he'd have one last cup of honey tea before bed. Life was sweet. Until one morning, one morning, things weren't the same. In fact, something ter terribly unsame had happened. There was no more honey. The bees had gone on strike. Benedict's breakfast wasn't the same without honey. It wasn't without his honey toast tea. He couldn't knit. Practice was dreadful, and he didn't even bother with his errands. Benedict became deeply discouraged. Just then he heard someone say, Hey, you, in the fur coat. It was a small, very small bee with a remarkably loud voice. We need to talk, said the bee. Talk? Humph, <laughs> rumbled Benedict. I'll let you live in my yard. All I ask is for is a few jars of honey. You should be grateful. No, not go on strike. A few jars of honey, said the bee. Buddy, we deliver three jars of honey to you every day, every month, every year. Do the math, Einstein. The hive is a wreck, the bee continued. It's all we can do to keep the walls from falling in. The roof leaks. Wind blows through the cracks. The last three queens up and quit on us because of the lousy working conditions. The, the bee showed Benedict the garden. Look, said the bee. Weeds everywhere. We have to fly miles away just to find enough flour to make our honey. So we vote to strike. You're taking us for granted, the bee declared. You want honey? Things need to change. It's up to you, bear. And with that, the very small bee flew off. The thought of losing his honey sent a chill down Benedict's spine. He had a lot to think about. Maybe I've been too selfish, Bendix said to himself. I never thought about what the bees need, but how am I going to make this right? So he did some research, and he did a little shopping. He cleared the weeds. He built a new hive. He planted some flowers. He planted some wild seed, flower seeds, and he did a lot of work. Benedict even learned how to harvest honey. I suppose it's a bit rude to expect them to do it all themselves, he thought. Finally, he was ready to show the bees all the work he had done. What would they think? He waited. He held his breath. And then he heard the remarkably loud voice of this very small bee. Drop the signs, girls! Time to get back to work! These days, Benedict is still a creature of habit. He still has his daily routine, but he does not take the honey for granted anymore. He knows life is, his life is sweet, but now it's even sweeter for everyone. Ooh, what a great book. We need to remember to keep, keep planet Earth um, healthy and happy for the bees. And after I read that book, I decided I'd make a bee project. You can see I cut out a, a yellow shape for the bee's body. I add some black paper stripes to antennas. I used coffee filter, a coffee filter for his wings. 
googly eyes if you have them, and six legs because he's an, the bee is an insect and they have six legs. So if you want to give this a try, go ahead. I know you guys will be great at the project. All right, for now, I'm saying bye. Bye.